Okay, so now let's cover uh, occurring functions. Um, and uh, wait a second, let me just bring this back up. So before we we talk about uh, occurring, I want to just give you guys a bit of um, a bit deeper understanding of what one can do with this new um, representation of frozen star. Okay, so the idea is that now one thing we can do is we can have, um, we saw that we had, um, for instance, we can do define. So this is FR, so a frozen multiplication where we are uh, storing number three, right? But we could also um, store any other thing. So we could store number 10, um, where we would call frozen star and then 10, right? Uh, and if I call FR of 10, of 10, I would get 100. And if I get FR of 3 of 10, I get 30, right? So let's make sure that's the case. Check equal. Um, and I am expecting 100 here. And I'm expecting 30 here. So this is just to show that each time you call FR, uh, sorry, frozen star, that creates a new function uh, that has a different internal state. So in this case, the internal state is 10. Um, so, and in this case, FR3, the internal state is 3. right? And when I talk about the internal state, I talk about this arg1 here. Right? Um, OK. So at first, uh, another thing I, I would like you guys to try to do uh, the same exercise I did for um, to kind of spell out what happens, uh, try to do the same thing with the new version. And actually try to do it for a function call of fr3, 2. And try to understand why is it the case that the result is indeed 100. That will really help you understand what's going on behind the scenes and why these things work. Okay, so now back to the slides. Um, so we saw two versions, right? We saw a version with a struct where we created a, um, a struct to store a function and one argument. Uh, and then we saw um, that we actually don't really need the, um, that struct. We can just encode that with a certain fun with just a function uh, where we create a function internally dynamically that will store in its internal state arg1 because it's being passed here. Uh, but we can even generalize and say, oh, now we don't want it to be uh, you know, just a f multiplication. I want this for any function. For I, I could want it for, um, I could want it for addition, right? So uh, freeze, function freeze here, is kind of generalizing that and making f um, a parameter as well, where f is the function being called, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm freezing a binary function and I'm passing um, one argument first and the second argument la next, right? Okay, so let's try to add. Um, so one thing we could do is we can define uh, freeze plus, which is freeze we can do plus and we can do 10. So this is gonna do, sorry, 10 plus, right? And if I call 10 plus, with 2, I would expect to see 12. And indeed it works. And I'm just going to create a bug just so you guys believe me. Okay, and you see that it is actually working. So, um, so what I did here, I just generalized frozen star. So it's no longer frozen star, it's now uh, it freezes uh, not just multiplication, but any function f that I give it as a parameter. So going back to that part where we talked about where we can pass functions as parameters. So here's an example where we are passing a value in a parameter and we're creating a function dynamically that is storing f internally. And it's also storing arg1 internally. Okay. So additionally, we could even go a, a step even further. And we may be wondering, okay, so why do we even need to pass arg1 directly. So maybe let's make this even more general. And let's create, oops, 
Where'd you go? It's here. Um, now I can remove this. No longer need it. So one thing I could do is I can, you know, do it again. And I can define a function, get arg1, where I pass arg1. Uh, and what that function does, it creates a function that uh, gets argument2 and eventually calls, when called, applies f to arg1 and 2. And after this definition, I want to return uh, get arg1. So now I can do uh, frozen plus, and I can call freeze plus, and I can call frozen plus 10. Okay, and everything works. Okay, so the only thing I did was I just generalized um, this idea of freezing parameters. Uh, and I generalize it for multiple arguments, okay? So that's the difference between attempt one and attempt two. Um, okay, and this is where I have here. So I, I would like you guys to take some time to think about the evaluation and why things work, work out the, the way they're working. Uh, so maybe try to do this example by hand and let me know how that goes, if it doesn't work well. Okay, so um, this idea where we are freezing a function and then um, eventually passing all of its parameters is known as currying. Okay, and it's idea where you take a function, a function that takes, let's say, three, in this case, it's two parameters, and what we do is um, we create a new function that takes a parameter each time you call it, you have to pass a new parameter that creates a new function that is expecting the second parameter and so on until you reach the last parameter, in which case you apply the original function that is curried to all of its uh, arguments. And as you will see, this actually provides a lot of flexibility. And there are some um, programming languages such as Haskell and OCaml where curring is the default. So all the functions that you have are, um, you know, if you define a function and you define and you pass plus, uh, and let's say you do plus one, that is not an error. That just means that if your function plus is binary, right? Because in Racket it is, uh, it expects multiple arguments, right? So this in Racket is not an error, and what it does, it returns one. But in C, for instance, plus is binary and it expects a second parameter. If you just provided one, that is an error. But in, in Haskell and OCaml, that's not an error. It just returns a function that is expecting one more parameter. And the reason is that is useful is because you can store these frozen functions in data structures and pass them around and build very powerful combinators, as we will see later. So what we see in this, in this um, slide is just a way to describe what is currying in a recursive definition where we have two cases and we have all of these parameters and what we're saying here is we need to know how many arguments the function has to be able to know how to curry it so you're saying that oh i want to curry this function f that has um n arguments n parameters sorry and this a is the list of arguments i've stored so far right so the internal state so if uh, n is greater than 1, that means, and I, and I call curry of all of this, 2x, what that does, it returns a new curry, curried function that has one less argument and stores one more value. This is why the x is here. And then eventually when you reach the base case, that's when you've read, uh, you're all, you reach, uh, you're not expecting any more, so this will be the last uh, argument that you're going to take, uh, and in which case you're going to uh, call f and pass all the arguments plus x. 
So in this is just an example of currying. Actually can be done in Racket directly if you just write curry star. So that is an equivalent way. So let me write that here. So if I do curry, star, uh, so that what, uh, I'll just copy paste. Okay, so in this example, I'm just showing you uh, that we're using the curry from the standard library of Racket and how to call it. So you just think of it as a generalized version of this freeze. Okay. It's important to understand this because in, in your homework assignment, you're going to be asked to write the reverse. So that is, given a function that is curried in a list of arguments, apply the curried function to the list of arguments. Okay. And Haskell curry was actually a very, very influential. Uh, so curry is named after Haskell curry, which was a very influential person in computer science uh, and in logic as well. Um, and he's actually born in, in Massachusetts in Millis. So an hour drive from UMass Boston. Um, and I, I, if you're curious, I think it would be really cool to go through his um, Wikipedia page and read a bit of his um, achievements. So he he's influenced um, basically functional programming language by giving uh, its foundations. Um, and uh, indeed, even there's a programming language called Haskell because of him. Um, yeah, and one of his greatest um, things he published was the Corey Howard uh, correspondence, which establishes that uh, for any proof, you proofs are, can be seen as programs, and you can go from one to the other, uh, which is cool because it means you can write uh, proofs as programs. So you can programming can uh, or proving can be seen as a way of programming, and indeed there are some programming languages that um, that are used just for proving. And I use that in my research. And if you're curious, just ping me and we can talk a bit about that as well. Okay, I hope you had fun today and learned a bit about currying. And good luck for homework too.